In 2017, Eric Schmidt was the executive chairman of Alphabet, and during the annual Google Cloud Next event, he started this presentation with a clear message. Just get to the cloud now. Just, just go there now. There's no time to waste anymore. In 2020, Eric Schmidt is no longer Alphabet CEO, but he works closely with the American government and, together with his former wife, is the founder of Schmidt Future, a philanthropic initiative that brings talents together to foster new ideas. Eric Schmidt was one of the keynote speakers at Q2B, a yearly event organized by QCWare Corporation, a leading quantum computing company that provides software and services to enterprise customers. He had a clear message on this occasion too, this time about quantum computing. We know this stuff's going to happen five to eight years from now, so now is the time to be getting those platforms built and get ready for them. It's going to be incredible when it happens. According to Schmidt, history seems to repeat itself. What he is experiencing now, in fact, is no different than what he experienced at the beginning of his career, when he worked at Bell Labs in the 70s. Well, it's funny that I'm old enough that you see life and circumstances return. When I started programming, I was programming in an IBM Assembler 360 language. And it feels like quantum computing is exactly at that point. We don't have any of the layers above. We don't have common platforms. We don't have common languages. We don't have a way of taking a compiler that will take some programming language and then sorting it out to whichever architecture. We know this stuff's going to happen five to eight years from now, so now is the time to be getting those platforms built and get ready for them. It's going to be incredible when it happens. Judging from past events, Eric Schmidt tends to be right when he makes his predictions. He started talking about the advantages of cloud computing 15 years ago. And today, according to data from, from Synergy Research Group, with COVID-19, the advantages of public cloud have been simply amplified and the market remains on track to grow by well over 30% in 2020. The importance of cloud will most likely continue to grow. In fact, cloud computing is also the basis of quantum computing. Schmidt was also right two years ago when he anticipated the increasing importance of machine learning. Take a listen. I'll bet my, the rest of my professional career that the future of your business is big data and machine learning applied to the business opportunities, customer challenges, and things before you. And now here is what to expect from quantum computing. So here comes along a, a form of computing that makes no sense to a normal person, that somehow is able to do this specialized calculations instantaneously. Um, and we now have languages that will allow you to program in it, we have an algorithm called Schwarz algorithm, which is known to actually work for uh, prime factoring and those sorts of things. And we know that these systems will be useful for essentially optimization problems. This one starts cloud native. So you can imagine that in the next few years, there will be these, I'm going to call them QPUs for lack of a better word, that will be associated with a cloud pro service provider. We'll also have TPUs and GPUs and traditional processing units. And somehow the system's going to figure out which algorithm goes where. Initially, very poorly, but eventually these systems will be smart, so smart they'll figure out how to optimally solve your problem. And that's the power of computer science. According to Eric Schmidt, today there are five different approaches around the world about quantum computing, all of which have required an enormous amount of investment. Again, not unlike the 50s and the 60s and so forth. What you want is you want the computer to work all the time. You want it to produce the same actor all the time. You don't want it to have blue screens, if you will. And you want the state to be held for a while. And that's mostly engineering at this point. It's powerful engineering, mm -hmm. but you can see that it's going to happen. Most people I've talked with believe it's within a decade. It's not 20 years. Okay. And this is really important because when this thing shows up, it has a lot of implications. Uh, the most obvious one being in terms of the ability to decrypt that were thought to be undecryptable. But there are many other, other things that would be possible. But I want to go back to we, when, when we can solve core problems in material science, core problems in energy, you know, batteries and solar and so forth, uh, quantum chemistry, though it will produce this explosion of applications, not unlike what I saw in the 1980s and 1990s. 
It's the same thing, mm -hmm. right? The vastly more powerful computer. So who is going to be the winner in this scenario? Some of the sponsors of this event are among the leading companies in the field. But traditionally, Eric Schmidt reminds us, it is the government that provides the early investment to develop an industry. Then the private or public companies enter the market when they see the opportunities. And I think the sequence goes like this. Um, first, it's clearly cloud native, so that's good. You don't have to rebuild all of that. The second thing is you've got to figure out a way to build replicable and larger systems, and you have to figure out programming languages. Google has offered one to the open, to the open source community called Cirque. It's fine. Um, if that one doesn't pr prevail, something else will prevail. But eventually what's going to happen, and kid, you know, I'm not kidding you, people will be write, writing in the equivalent of Python and PyTorch, again, eight, nine, ten years from now, and it will be handled automatically. When that happens, it's a revolution. Because most people are having trouble understanding how to program these very specialized devices in terms of the way quantum works. And developing compilers that can actually understand that and take the programmer's intent in the traditional way that we all program and turn it into an outcome will be revolutionary. And all of those are under development now. And here are some benefits and risks associated to quantum computing. Um, a reasonable expectation is that magnetometry as we know it will disappear. Um, it turns out that these quantum systems over the next decade will be far more so sensitive to magnetic changes. And a good example there is that that's how your heart will be checked. That's how other aspects of human bodies will be checked. It's also how uh, things that are going on in the natural world will be followed, because trivial, tiny little magnetic changes will, will do things. It has been assumed for 10 years that the uh, ability to break prime factorization, which is at the core of RSA, will allow this basically uh, store now and decrypt later, which is what people are doing to enable it. My guess is that's going to happen regardless of what we do. So I strongly would say to our audience that now is the time to change your encryption from the RSA standards from 30 years ago, and they did well for us, to new emerging NIST standards that are quantum essentially resistant. As far as we can tell, this, these new solutions, which are available now, are not breakable by quantum, uh, quant by quantum mechanisms. The reason you should act now, for example, is because we know that foreign powers, and I won't go into the details, are busy recording everything. And it is their plan 10 years, to go, 10 years from now to decrypt everything. And so I'd rather get the stuff encrypted now, stop the current mm -hmm. leakage, if you will, of future encrypted data. I'd like to get it fixed now. A number of companies are now working on how to combine RSA and these more powerful tools. It's right at the edge, and I strongly encourage the audience to take this seriously. You have time now. You don't have time in the future. So get your act together mm -hmm. around this. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but when you security matters a lot on these, on these always-on networks, and here's something that you can do now to prepare for a very likely future in maybe 10-plus years.